Hi, Jochen from Inner Space Explorers. Today we talk about why you want to be able to shut off your single cylinder. Because I received a ton of questions regarding that, probably um, initialized by a video that I posted a while ago. Before I do that, I want to show you another present I got from a follower. <laughs> And it's interesting because I don't know what it is. Um, it's obviously something that you need to build and it looks like it's diverse. I don't know if you can see that in close-up. So if anybody has a Dima actually sent me that from Russia. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's two divers that somehow need to be assembled and then painted. So <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> if any of you knows what exactly that is or has a picture of how this should be assembled, or Dima, if you see that, it would be awesome if you give me a hint. Otherwise, I'll figure that out on a long, cold evening in winter. Thank you very much for sending it to me. All right, back to the topic. Um, I received a few emails from people that said, well, we saw in the ISE material that you train people to be able to reach and, and manipulate the valve on a single cylinder. So reach back, turn the valve. And um, a lot of people ask, like, why would you want to do that? I mean, it doesn't make any sense to shut off your air supply if you only have one cylinder. Yeah, that's true. Um, not always, but yeah, generally. So let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, I think a diver should be self-sufficient. So obviously you want to be in control of your equipment. If you can't reach your valve, that's not good because you always need somebody to do that. And um, it's very funny that people always think, oh, if it says you need to be able to reach your valve, you want to shut it down. Uh, yeah, maybe, especially in technical diving, but maybe you want to open it. And uh, I'll give you two practical examples of that, that I experienced myself and that actually made me think about that and actually start teaching that. The first one is I was diving with an ex-girlfriend of mine in Florida Gulfstream, um, high current on a wreck, actually the USS Dwayne. And uh, for those of you who know that wreck, you know what I'm talking about. The others, this is in the middle of the Gulfstream. It's usually very, very strong current. And what you do is you do a negative entry. So you go to the back of the boat, you deflate your BCD, you jump in. So you immediately start to sink and then there's a rope and you start to go down. And um, bad practice there on that particular dive boat the people actually geared up while they were sitting um, because it was a bit bumpy so everybody was sitting there mask on fins on etc and then they started to walk like Donald Duck to the back of the boat and the dive master opened their tanks horrible practice completely unacceptable but that's how they did it and uh, obviously my girlfriend and myself we had our stuff sorted and the tanks were open so when she actually went there, the guy closed her valve. So obviously not the brightest person in the universe. So on and off, not for him, he just turned the valve and he turned it off. So she deflated her BCD, jumped in and realized sinking into the blue that her valve was, uh, that her uh, cylinder was shut off and she couldn't breathe and she, obviously she couldn't inflate her BCD. So that's not a good situation. As she was properly trained, she reached back, opened the valve and everything was fine. But if she would not have been possible to do those, this could actually have led to a very, very bad scenario. Because obviously, think about it, I mean, um, your wetsuit gets compressed, you sink even faster, you, the volume in your lungs get compressed, you can't breathe. At some point you exhale and that's it, then you inhale water. So that was the first thing where I was like, mm, not good. And the second one was also on a wreck in Florida, again, high current and um, the method of going down to the wreck was people were pulling themselves down on a rope. So the rope due to the current was actually in a almost 45 degree angle. And what you do is you grab that actually big rope uh, with a buoy on top where the dive board was attached and you pull yourself down to the wreck against the current. And what happened is that the, um, the rope actually went over the shoulder of the diver and underneath the knob. So now going down that knob actually is rotating like this. So actually the rope was rolling off the tank. And that uh, person that I was guiding there, actually we reached the wreck in 38 meters of water or so, 
and he turned to myself and gave out of gas. So I gave him a regulator and I was like, how is it possible this guy is out of gas? We checked all the SPGs on the boat and uh, the guy had a full tank. So I checked him and realized the tank was closed. So I was like, mm, strange, how did that happen? And the day after, same dive, I actually saw it, how that rope actually got underneath the valve and turned it off. So same thing, you go down there, you're aware of this problem, you can't breathe anymore, regulators closing off, you reach back, you turn your valve back open. So yeah, in that case, nothing happened. We were close together, body team that all worked, but it obviously would be easier if you could reach back and fix that yourself. The other thing is, and this will actually be a topic of another video, is the freezing regulator. Um, if you have a second stage freezing up, you're diving regular with a body, um, it can be an option to close that, to actually stop the free flow, go on your body's uh, secondary, and usually after half a minute or so, because the water is obviously warmer than zero degrees, so it's not freezing, actually that, um, that ice buildup stops and the regulator can work as normal, but obviously for that you need to be able to close it and reopen it and you don't want your body to close your tank if you cannot reopen it same thing again you need to be able to handle all your equipment so i hope that answers the question a little bit and makes sense to you um, if you have questions comment or if you have experience with an issue like that please um, put it in the comment section i'm always happy to read about these experiences and uh, a lot of times that leads to new video topics if you like this channel please uh, give us thumbs up and subscribe to it. If you subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you get an update when we upload new content. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.